Good morning, everybody. I am sitting out here in front of my house in my car to do this video, um, waiting for a reply whether I'm supposed to be going somewhere. So I figure I'd do this instead of while I'm driving. Um, angels. We've been talking a lot about angels, and it's a it's a really cool subject to talk about. And uh, I know, and I've heard over the time that we can uh, command angels, and so. My question was, over the years, I always heard, you know, that we can command angels, but over the years, I always was hesitant, because over the years, I always thought, well, you know, command angels, not tell them, you know, tell them what to do, and I kind of went back and forth on this, and not sure if we could do it, and then I finally said, okay, God, show me in the scripture that I have confidence myself that we can command angels, and so, uh, I was doing a little study on it today, and if you follow me at all, you know that one of my favorite subjects is the armor of God. And so that's what God took me to. Um, when I said, God, can we command angels? Is that is that what we're supposed to do? I know that we are supposed to heal people more than pray for healing, but we're supposed to heal the people. And that is uh, through the angels getting the body parts and from the warehouse in heaven because God created it all. And Anyway, so my question to God was, God... Can we show me scripture that says that we can command angels, that I feel confident in commanding angels? So he took me to the armor of God in Ephesians 6. And he says, um, let me get my Bible out here and actually read it to you. Ephesians 6, which is all marked up in my Bible because I, I use it so much. But in Ephesians 6, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against all the wiles of the enemy. Um, let me read it here. Ephesians 6. Okay, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles of the enemy. Okay, so, first of all, two things to notice. And I'm, I'm getting to what he said about the angels. Uh, be strong in the Lord. So there's one category and in the power of his might. There's two categories. Then it goes over the whole armor of God. Well, first it says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers in darkness uh, of this age, and spiritual hosts and wickedly, wickedness in heavenly places. So, part of our warfare is with the spirit realm and in the spirit realm. Okay, so how do you fight in the spirit realm? You fight with spiritual armor. Now, if you take a look at our armor, all of our armor is for when we're getting attacked except for one piece of armor, actually two pieces of armor, and that is the sword, the sword and the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace is wherever, stepping on the enemy's head, wherever you go, taking authority and taking dominion. But God pointed out to me when I said, God, can show me in the scripture where it says that we are to command angels. And he pointed out the sword of the spirit. Okay, so let's go on here. It says the sword of the spirit um, let's go to, okay, um, okay, and take the, the, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, so stop with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication, supplication in the spirit. So, the sword, which is the word of God, is how we fight in the spirit realm. Okay, so we are a spirit, we live in a body, and we have a soul. But if we are fighting in the spirit realm, and we take our sword by speaking the words of God, then how do we apply this to angels? Okay, he showed me, and I'm sure you probably know all these scriptures, but putting them together in this way shows you how you can command angels. And a lot of people back off of this and say, oh, you know, we can't command angels, only God can. Well, that's not true, because... Well, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me get back here to the sword of the spirit, which is what God showed me, which is the word of God. Okay, now another scripture says, um, Hebrews 1.14, that uh, in some of these scriptures I might have the wrong reference uh, because I kind of did this in a hurry. I believe it's first he, uh, Hebrews 1.14 that says that aren't all the angels ministering spirits sent to minister to those who will receive our heirs of salvation? Hebrews 1, okay, Hebrews 1, 14, let's see if that's the right scripture. Um, okay, well, first of all, go to 7, Hebrews 2, 7. It says, 
uh, you have crowned him. He's talking about man and say, what, what is man that you are mindful of and the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. Okay. Angels, they were afraid to say it, but it was God. You have made man a little lower than God. If you look that up, but that's not my study for today. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over all the works of your hands. You have put all, God's just showing this to me right now. You have put all things in subject to him under his feet. Okay. So the angels are subject to us under our feet. And I never saw that before. And also the demons. So the angels hearken to the voice of the word. The voice of the word is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So when you speak the word of God, you are commanding this army like angels go and do such and such according to the word of God. Now, you can't just tell them to go and do anything. Uh, if it isn't in the finished work of Jesus and what he did on the cross and what he finished and what his blood paid for us to have, then you can't have angels do it. You can't say angels go and, and cause this man and this wife to be separated so I can marry this man. Now that is totally against what Jesus did on the cross. Uh, for example, okay, so the angels are sent to minister to those who will be heirs of salvation. That's us, okay? They hearken to the voice of the word. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. So you take the word of God and you, you know, you can do this, but that's not going to do anything. You have to speak the word of God. Life and death is in the power of our tongue. And we have to command the army. Angels are armies. Angels, the host, our angels are called the host of heaven. And they weren't created to look wonderful. Thank you for all those hearts, whoever is doing that. Um, they were created to fight for us. They aren't created to defend heaven. They're created to defend us. And God put all this scripture to me just the other day. Um, and it's really exciting when I get my own revelation. I, I have gotten some revelation from Kat Kerr, who's awesome and wonderful. And you got to check out her books. But this God put together for me just now and in the last couple of days. So I feel confident commanding the host of heaven. Okay, so when there is an army, the army needs a commander. Okay, and we are in Christ and Christ is in us. And we can do everything that Jesus did. And Jesus said, and let me see... Um, if I can find this, um, I can get so many rabbit trails here. Um, Jesus said, could I, could I not, uh, when Peter took the sword out and cut off the servant's ears, and he said, could I not call a whole legions of angels to me if I wanted to, but not my will, God's will, I have to die on the cross, in other words. So he said that he could call the angels to him. He could command the angels to come to him. So that's another scripture that shows, oh, thank you, Anna, for doing all those little hearts. <laughs> um, it's me, she says. Um, so we can command the angels. Hi, hi Jean. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Laura. Hi, uh, Marcella. Um, we can command the angels because they hearken to the voice of the word. And we're on this earth and we're to speak the word. The word is the sword. Okay, so it's part of our armor. The sword is part of our armor. Okay, so uh, 2 Corinthians 10.3. Let me go there real quick. Uh, I love just sharing this stuff with you because I just get as excited as you guys do because when I get revelation, I want to share it. I want to change people's lives like my life's been changed by these revelations. Okay, so 2 Corinthians 10.3. Sometimes I write the scripture wrong. I get in a hurry. It's Colossians instead of Corinthians. And it's like, okay, where is that? So, I believe I'm going to 2 Corinthians 10, 13. 10, uh, 13, however we do. For the exceed over 30. Okay, it's talking about our authority there. Um, uh, okay, that's obviously not where I wanted to go. Okay, but there's other scriptures. This is kind of like the tip of the iceberg that God showed me. If you go to Revelations 10, 1, it says that the angels are clothed in the sky. The angels are camouflaged, uh, like we use camouflage clothing. The angels are camouflaged in the sky, watching what the enemy is doing. Uh, so, um, in, in they clothe in the sky. So you can look for the host of heaven hidden in the sky. And I have seen so many. I'm writing another book about angels. It's, gonna call, it's called Angels in the Sky. I already have it started. I already got the ISBN number, everything. 
uh, don't have the cover yet, um, but it's pictures that I've taken. I was going to use other people's pictures, but God says, don't use other people's pictures because he's going to give me so many pictures that I'm going to be overwhelmed to use the own pictures that I take of angels in the sky. And so I'm putting together a book on pictures of angels in the sky and how they use the camouflage to camouflage themselves. And Kat Kerr talks about this, uh, that the camouflage of the sky and the clouds, and here's some scriptures to prove it that the angels camouflage in the sky and I always see um, lions every almost every single picture I take of the angels in the sky are lions I don't know I guess they're called the Royals and I guess that they're part of my team to minister and they are almost always lions and it's so cool okay Isaiah 13 5 says uh, the weapons of his indignation to seize and destroy uh, things on the land. In other words, angels are what cause you to be at the right place at the right time. Angels are what protect you. Angels are what um, cause you to smell certain things, to say, oh, this donut. Uh, let me tell you a story. One of my friends who used to be my best friend, her husband had left her for another woman, and um, God gave me a prophecy for her husband and told me to go deliver it to him now. And that was 7 in the morning. And it's like, oh, this is crazy. But I know I hear from you, God. I'm going to do it. So 7 o'clock in the morning, I was going to her house to deliver this. And all of a sudden, I smelled donuts. And I got hungry for donuts. And a little while down the street, I saw a donut shop. So I decided to stop into this donut shop because because I was hungry. And I smelled donuts. But I was on my way to deliver a prophecy to this woman's husband about him cheating on her. And what God had said about it. So I pulled into this donut shop to get a donut I was hungry for. And guess who sat there? The husband was sitting there. I said, oh, God, I know this was you. So I delivered that prophecy to him that God gave me. And that really touched him and changed his heart and changed their life because of that prophecy. Now, the angels made me smell that smell. And now here's another story. A, a couple days ago, I was going on for my prayer walk. And all of a sudden, I had this taste in my mouth, and I was going, in the natural, I couldn't taste anything. But in the spirit realm, I taste it. Now, I don't remember what it was. I suspect it was, the, the first thing that came to my mind was taste and see that the Lord is good. And I've been asking God to be able to see into the spirit realm more than I do, and be able to see the host of heaven camouflaged in the sky and around me, and I invite the host of heaven to use my property, my house, my home, my car, everything and everywhere. They have free reign to use my property to build or to do whatever. So I've been saying, God, I want to see more in the spirit realm. I'm a spirit. I live in a body and I have a soul. So I should be able to see in the spirit realm as naturally as I see in the physical realm. Because I am a spirit. I'm one spirit with God. And as Jesus is, so am I. So I want to see more into the spirit realm. And so... I was just walking along, minding my own business, just praying and praising God. And all of a sudden, I had this taste in my mouth. And it was a really good taste. I knew it was something I was familiar with. And I knew it was something that I really liked and enjoyed eating. And But I couldn't put my finger on what it was. And so the first thing that came to my mind was taste and see that the Lord is good. So I thought, oh, that's really cool. So that's, so that's tasting in the spirit realm. Um, so getting back to... Um, the angels, they are our weapons. They are hidden and clothed in the sky. You can also read in Daniel 10, 12, it says, The words that I heard uh, I have come in response to your words. So in the Old Testament, now remember, we're in the New Covenant. The New Covenant is different from the Old, but the Old we can take examples from. In the Old Testament, they didn't know about Satan. They, didn't, they gave God credit for what Satan did, and, and they didn't know a lot of things. But in the Old Testament, we can see examples of angels and, and how um, a little bit more about that. And the angel said that the first time that Daniel prayed and the first time Daniel said the words to bring the angel to him, that the angel was sent to come to him. So you can see that angels respond to our words. And so um, we have the right to command angels. That's just my little little teaching that God gave me yesterday and right now some revelation on it. We have the right to command angels. And in fact, the army is sent to heaven, uh, from heaven to earth to minister to us. So if they're to minister to us, then we are the ones to give them the commands. Okay. Uh, 
God gives them the commands, go and do this and minister to them. But if they're ministering to us, we give them the commands. And God gave me this kind of this little um, um, example. He said, when you go to Home Depot to get some parts to build your house, you say, okay, I want this big, huge sheet. And then you don't, you don't, you might not take the, or uh, this big, huge, whatever, and you can't even carry it or lift it. It's so heavy. So you go to the cash register and you say, I want this sheet and you pay for it. Then they call in the intercom, Home Depot or whatever. They call in the intercom and they say, you know, here's the receipt number. Bring that here. Well, I said, that's like it is with the angels. God already did everything we need for life and godliness he withholds no good thing from us um, if you don't have it and Jesus paid for it it's because you aren't commanding the angels you aren't speaking it you aren't decreeing it you aren't confessing it you aren't you aren't calling it to you you want the cat you don't say here dog you say here kitty 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 okay so God showed me that analogy that example so what the angels would do is they would go and they would get that sheet just like the workers would go and get that sheet that was on that receipt of the example I'm giving you and they would bring it to you and he says the angels are the same way the angels are assigned to us to minister for us like when you lay hands on people and pray for them and I lay hands on people and I say like somebody needs a new heart I say I I I command the spirit of cancer to be gone out of your body in Jesus name. You have no authority here. I take authority over you and dominion over you. I forbid you to operate in this body. Spirit of cancer, go in Jesus name. Now, Father, in Jesus name, I know that this person needs a new ovaries because cancer has killed their ovaries. So angels, I command you in Jesus name, go to the warehouse in heaven and bring a new, bring new ovaries to this person. I speak new ovaries creative miracle new ovaries to this person right now in jesus name i thank you father i thank you father for the ministering spirits ministering to this person i thank you father that this person is healed of cancer delivered and set free i thank you for the creative miracle of new ovaries in this person in jesus name and so that's how you pray you don't say oh father if it be your will heal this person oh cancer go no you have a spirit you have authority over all spirits including angels because they're sent to minister to you. And that is a revelation for me. Um, everything on this earth we are um, to have authority and dominion over. And remember though, you can't boss around the angels and tell them to do something that is not the word of God. You've got to know your word. Healing is always God's will. Healing is always now. And it's always wholeness and completeness and everything. So you can tell the angels about healing and receiving healing and so on so anyway and if you're going to say something about my glasses you know what sometimes it's easier to go to the doctor or to get glasses than to believe for your healing or while you're going to your doctor or while you're wearing your glasses to believe god for your healing and to go on okay so don't say oh you believe in healing but you wear glasses well you know i wear glasses and i'm believing for my eyes to get healed i'm believing for teeth to grow in where i'm missing teeth I'm calling them in. I'm speaking them. I'm decreeing them. I'm declaring them. So the same thing with you. Um, it's no sin to go to the doctor. It's no sin to wear glasses or hearing aids or false teeth or whatever you need to do until the healing is complete and manifests itself. But you need to be praising and thanking God for the healing before you see it. Because in the um, spirit realm, it's already there. It's just waiting for you to receive it, waiting for you to take it. It belongs to you. So yes, these are scriptures that show that we have the right to command angels. And so let me summarize it up if I can. Okay, so uh, angels hearken to the voice of the word. We have a whole armor and part of our armor that is mighty through God is the sword of the spirit, which is speaking the word of God, praying in the spirit. The spirit realm is what affects the natural world and the spirit realm is affected by the words that we speak in the physical realm because words are spiritual and supernatural. Okay, the sword of the spirit is the angels and the word hearkening to the voice of the word of God. Uh, they are sent to minister to us. So we are the commanding chief uh, be God and us through the word of God, what has already been um the finished work of Jesus, Ephesians 3, we're to enforce the finished work of Jesus. We're spiritual policemen. Um, 
uh, we are commanding the army. So they minister to us. They hearken to the voice of the word. They are a part of our weapons. They are a part of the sword of the spirit and so on. So that's a summary of everything. So my name is Robin Bremer. RobinBremer.net is my website. Check it out. Share this uh, post about angels with your social media site. Check out some of my books. I offer them all free if you are in Kindle Unlimited. All my books are free. I have 36 books out there. Uh, several of them are, are on angels. One of them is on the supernatural, uh, some of the experiences that I've experienced uh, in the supernatural realm, which are really fun. Uh, anyway, uh, I will talk to you later. And if you're an author, a Christian author or a Christian author leader, pastor, uh, I publish books. Check out my site. Just check under author. I publish books. I promote books and so on. So have a blessed, blessed day. And I will talk to you next time. Remember, share with your social media sites. Love y'all. Bye-bye.